This is the Cherry Tigo 8. It's a midsize seven seater crossover that sells between 1.2 million to 1.3 million. For that price, you get a premium interior, you get a lot of tech features, and you get a 10 year, 1 million kilometer warranty on your engine. It sounds like a pretty good deal. Is it worth your money? Let's find out. My first introduction to the Cherry brand was the Cherry QQ back in the early 2010s. Let's just say that it didn't leave a very good first impression, and that's probably why I haven't paid attention to the Tigo until now. After seeing the Tigo 8 in person, I can now personally confirm that Cherry has improved a lot since the Cherry QQ. This is not just a vehicle that's designed to be affordable. It also feels more premium than a lot of Japanese and Korean crossovers in the same price range. Exterior. The Tigo 8 is a mid-sized crossover. It's a lot bigger than the Geely Cool Grey. It's about the same size as the Ascara, and it uses its extra dimensions pretty well. Unlike the Ascara, the Tigo 8 is a 7-seater. The Tigo 8 got a lot of attention while it was with me. Maganda raw sabi nila. The Tigo 8's front end is not as angry looking as a lot of vehicles nowadays. Now it's a matter of taste. I prefer angrier looking cars, but your preference might be different. I think the front still looks nice though. It has plenty of little details to make it look interesting, but not so much that it becomes too busy. It has LED headlights and daytime running lights. The turn signals don't just turn on and off. They're sort of animated. They move towards the direction that you want to go. I think it's a nice touch. I think its best angle is here at the sides. It looks quite masculine. It has a more classical SUV shape compared to other crossovers. It doesn't look like a lifted hatchback at all. I think it looks quite similar to the CRV, especially with this chrome accent right here. The chrome around the window line gives it a more premium look. You have a lot of character lines here on the side. It's not quite angular and it's not quite soft either. It has plenty of creases and edges, but they softly blend into each other. I like the wheel fitment of the Tigo. The wheels are almost flush against the fenders, giving it a wider and more sure-footed look. The Tigo has 18-inch wheels painted in gunmetal, and they're wrapped in 235-55-18 tires. Batman tires. So it has four-wheel disc brakes, and I believe it has four-wheel independent suspension. At the back, it has LED tail lamps, which are connected at the center. So it looks like the Tigo 8 has one continuous horizontal day lamp. We have chrome accents which look like they could be exhaust tips, but they're just there for show. The actual exhaust tip is at the bottom. And you have these reflectors right here and fake air vents again. Overall, the Tigo 8 is a pretty attractive looking crossover, especially in this color. The engine is a 4-cylinder, 1.5-liter turbocharged petrol engine. It produces 145 horsepower and 210 newton meters of torque. 
For comparison, the GD Ascara Hybrid has 190 horsepower. While the Tigo 8 loses to the Ascara in terms of power, compared to low-end PPVs, the Tigo 8 has a pretty good power to weight ratio. The MUX LSA has 148 horsepower and 350 newton meters of torque. The Fortuner 2.4 has 147 horsepower and 400 newton meters of torque. And those are much heavier body on frame SUVs. The Tigo 8 has a 6 speed dual clutch transmission. Okay, so this is the interior of the Cherry Tigo 8. Compared to Japanese and Korean crossovers in this price segment, I think this looks more upmarket. You have plenty of soft touch materials here. This is leather with brown stitching. This is soft padded. This looks like it's also leather covered. It could be full leather. The steering wheel is also leather covered with black stitching. Over here you have your buttons for your cruise control and for your hands-free operation. Um, you have a couple of chrome accents here. Looks like they're made of plastic. This is soft padded. This is some sort of... This looks like um, brushed aluminum. But it's probably plastic. This is leather. Leather. You have these piano black panels over here. Um, they look nice, but they're um, scratch magnets. The vehicle has dual zone climate control. And you also have ventilated seats. We have a DCT over here. It's a 7 speed DCT. You have an electronic parking brake with auto hold. Over here is your button for your different drive modes. You have Eco and Sport. This is for your hill descent control. The Tigo has a 10 inch screen. It doesn't have Android Auto, it doesn't have Apple CarPlay, but it has Bluetooth. The Tigo 8 has a digital instrument cluster. Over here is your temperature gauge, your fuel gauge, your speedometer, and your tachometer. Yeah, you have this panoramic sunroof. The seats are covered in full leather. The Tigo 8 has power adjustable seats. Um, this is as far as the seat will go. And I feel like if, if you're 6 foot 4, you probably have legroom issues. You have a leather covered armrest here. It has a bit of padding. Over here you have two cup holders. This is removable. Underneath you have a 12 volt outlet and two USB ports. Um, and you have another cup holder over here. This is an air vent for um, for cooling your drinks. The glove box is regular sized. It's also dampened, as you can see. So you have ambient lighting here. You can change the color from blue to red. Here in the back seat, they have plenty of legroom. Um, you have two air vents over here, and you have a USB port and some storage over here. There doesn't seem to be a way to control the air from back here. You have a center armrest. There you go. With two cup holders. The Tigo is a 7-seater, so let's check out the back seat and see if it'll fit. It's the back seat for you. As you can see, there's not much legroom there. And headroom is also limited. The Tigo 8 has enough tech features for your average millennial, and probably too much for your average Tito. Aside from the regular key fob, 
also comes with a smartwatch. It's sort of like a Fitbit in that it can monitor your steps, your heart rate. You can pair it with your phone, etc. But it can also lock and unlock your doors. It can open the tailgate and you can start your engine remotely. It has a smart key system. As long as you have your key with you, you don't have to press any buttons. It will automatically unlock. As you can see. And then if you step away, it will automatically lock itself again. Like so. You could manually lock or unlock the Tiga weight using this um, touch panel right here. Um, this is how you lock it. It's a pretty convenient feature. If you're carrying groceries, you don't have to put your groceries down to get your keys. And if you're forgetful like me, you don't have to worry that you left the vehicle unlocked because it will automatically lock itself when you're away. The Tigo 8 also has heated side mirrors. It has a 360 camera. It has a power lift gate. It has power adjustable seats. It has heated seats. It has dual zone climate control, it has auto brake hold, it has a panoramic sunroof, it has an N95 cabin filter which should be able to filter out most airborne particles in your cabin. So I like the seating position, feels like you're sitting up high on the road. Almost feels like you're at the same height as that for sure. I'm expecting to be underwhelmed by the 1.5 liter engine, but surprisingly it's not bad. Acceleration from a stop is not immediate, below 1500 rpm, throttle response feels a bit sluggish, but once you get going and the turbos kick in, you get a decent surge of power. It is by no means sports car like, but I think it's more than enough for your daily commute and maybe even enough for a bit of spirited driving. Handling is also pretty good for a crossover of this size. There's very little body roll and it feels well balanced. I think it's actually quite fun to drive. The Tigo 8 has two driving modes. There's Eco and Sport. In Sport mode, it holds onto the gears a little bit longer. In Eco mode, it shifts a little bit earlier. Fuel efficiency is about 10 kpl in the city and about 16 kpl on the highway. Although for the two and a half days that I used the Tigo, the fuel gauge barely moved. I actually thought that it was broken because it didn't seem to move after driving it for 40 kilometers. One minor complaint is the tachometer. It's not in the usual configuration which is circular. On the Tigo 8, it's vertical. And the needle is the same color as the lines. And the font is pretty small, so it's a little hard to read the RPM without looking directly at the gauge. On most vehicles, you could tell what RPM you're at through your peripheral vision. But since this is an automatic, you probably don't even need to look at the tachometer. NVH is pretty good on the Tigo 8. Because it has a gasoline engine, it's a lot more quiet compared to diesel PPVs. Ride quality is pretty decent even with the 18-inch wheels. At this price bracket, there aren't a lot of 7-seater mid-size crossovers that the Tigo 8 can be compared to. I would say its closest competitor in terms of price and size is the Geely Azcara. And it's also in competition with base model PPVs like the MUX LS. Geely Azcara. I think the interior of the Geely Ascara looks a bit nicer. You get Napa leather seats on the Ascara and a 12.53 inch HD screen. But the Tigo 8's interior looks pretty nice as well. It looks nicer than anything that's Japanese or Korean under 1.5 million. 
The Ascara gets a bit more power and it has that hybrid powertrain. The advantage of the Tigo is that it is more spacious and it can accommodate two more passengers. It's also priced significantly lower. And I think the 10 year, 1 million kilometer warranty should be a major factor in your decision making process. MUX LS. The MUX LS is the cheapest variant of the MUX and it sells for 1.3 million. But you do feel the cost cutting on the LS. The interior feels cheap and it's been stripped of most of its amenities. Coming from the interior of the Tigo 8, the interior of the MUX feels like a major downgrade. The next higher model, the LSA, sells for almost 1.6 million. Also, the MUX is a lot more noisy because of its diesel engine. CRV. The CRV's base model sells for 1.67 million, which is significantly more expensive than the Tigo 8 Luxury. The base model is also a 5 seater. If you want a 7 seater, you'll have to get the 1.6 V model, which sells for 1.7 million. The CRV is slightly smaller than the Tigo 8, and its 1.6 liter diesel engine, while fuel efficient, is significantly less powerful. You also don't get amenities like a 360 camera and a panoramic sunroof on the CRV. Chinese cars have had a significant image revamp recently. They're no longer just aiming for affordability, they're now also aiming for desirability. Peso per peso, Chinese cars have nicer interiors and have more features compared to their Japanese and Korean counterparts. Cherry's commitment to quality and after sale service is commendable. If you have doubts about the Tigo 8's longevity, the 10 year, 1 million kilometer engine warranty should set your mind at ease. It also says a lot about Cherry's confidence about their product. I don't think any Japanese or Korean manufacturer offers that kind of warranty. Cherry has come a long way since the Cherry QQ. If, like me, you had a not so good first impression of Cherry because of the Cherry QQ, do check out the Tigo and it might change your mind. Thank you.